Taliban fighters gather before an attack, awaiting their final orders. Norwegian journalist Paul Refsdal is filming the Taliban as they've never been seen before, from behind their own front lines. Refsdal is with a commander named Davron and his small band of fighters. I don't really know how many men he has. At certain times there's 20, sometimes it's just five fighters. The smallest among them, one of Davron's own sons. I knew he was going out on the ambushes and he was carrying a machine gun. I mean, the gun was actually the same size as he was. For, for Davran, it's not something bad to send your 12 or 13 year old son out to fight. His son will come to heaven when and if he dies in this, this war. Inside, Davran goes over strategy with Omar, a local sub commander who's brought his fighters to help. This is the everyday situation in the Taliban. They're talking about, you know, how to do the attacks, where to position the weapons, how will the Americans react, and how could they pull out of the ambush without, uh, you know, being, uh, being hurt themselves. Davron, it seems, is always on alert. <laughs> The thing is, uh, in that area, uh, all the time when I'm there, there's air activity. There is jets flying over. It's like we are, we're living close to an airport. The time has come for the fighters to prepare their weapons and set off for battle. This is a, a picture of the main valley and you have a paved road going there. That's the only road the U.S. forces can use when they bring supplies or troops east, west in that area. Pauji. <laughs> The interesting thing was there was some really strange conversation going on. Uh, what are they saying? Oh, they were swearing a lot. <laughs> Apparently they they hit one vehicle and that's why they make some you know like a high five. I, I never see any vehicles hit at the time when I'm there. Oh, 
On the radio, a Taliban fighter sings of victory. The Taliban, they were very active. I mean, more active than I thought they would be militarily. Are they, are they good fighters? The Taliban are like most Muslim insurgents. When they have spare time, they read the Quran. They don't train. Uh, or what I could see from, from the firing, they were not very accurate. They weren't very accurate. No, but they're not afraid of dying, but they are not very accurate. Did you worry about being criticized for watching an ambush of, of coalition forces? Yes, uh, you know, I understand that this is very emotional for people, especially the people in the armed forces. Do you feel uncomfortable, though? Yes and no. I mean, I can say I'm a journalist. I just film what happened. But did the fighters really damage any vehicle or kill any coalition forces as they thought? The answer seems to be no. Apparently, the attack wasn't even worthy of a report. CNN contacted a U.S. press officer at coalition headquarters. She searched through 1,800 reports from October 2009 and said, quote, to be clear, we have no reports of any Taliban attacks in that area during the time frame given. After the ambush, Davran heads back to his mountain hideout, where he lives with his wife and children. You know, this is the man, early on the day, I saw him leading a ferocious attack against U.S. forces, and now he's sitting there with his kids. This girl, she's about five years old. She was afraid of me. And I asked, is she afraid of me because she, she thinks I'm an American? And uh, Doran said, yes, yes, that's, that's the reason. <laughs> Some people might see this and think that you're trying to humanize this force which is attacking American troops. Yeah, but, but I, I, I show what I saw. I, I show the everyday life of the Taliban. I made quite clear to Taliban, I don't want you to make any, arrange anything special for me. It's an important piece of the war to see these people, how they really are, I think. For Davron, this means being both a father and a fighter, awaiting his next chance to attack.